Peace and blessings, people. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you, this is your first time here. Welcome for the first time. Hope you're enjoying the content out there, everybody. You keep showing up for me, I'll keep showing up for you. Uh, so for those of you who are new, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Today, we're going to talk about why we overeat and what is the solution to that. Here's why this is such a big problem today. 75% of Americans are either overweight or obese. So that means if I got 100 people in the room, 75 of them are either overweight and or obese. Now, here's why that's critical. Obesity or excess body fat increases all causes of mortality. It means it increases all forms of death, whether it be hypertension and having a heart attack or colorectal cancer or autoimmune conditions. Having excess body fat will increase your risk for death, period, okay? We saw that during the pandemic where one of the number one risk factors was being either overweight or obese. So uh, what I will say is that here in America, um, the food is toxic. <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. And that's me being really nice. And as a result, people overeat and people overeat because a lot of the food has addiction baked into it. And when I say that, I say that from a standpoint of being a chemist. You know, one of the, two of the classes that I took in undergrad was spectroscopy and gas chromatography. And with those two classes, I literally can see everything that is, let, let's say for instance, if I put a, you know, I don't know, any kind of food product in a machine, I could break it down to the individual parts and see everything that is in the food. But with grass chromatography and spectroscopy, I also can dictate the flavor profile, which means that I can recreate the taste of watermelon and put it inside of a chip, okay? Which we see these days, which is crazy. You know, but it's important for us to know and understand that they use scientists, food chemists, literally to tickle your taste buds, and to highlight those reward centers inside of your, your brain that is literally the same areas of the brain that focus with illicit drugs like cocaine, okay? You get the same dopamine effect. And if you can get that same dopamine effect over and over and over, this is why people can't eat just one. So this is why this conversation is so important, okay? We gotta get people not only eating healthy, because here's the reason why that's so important. When you eat healthy, you can eat all you want. <laughs> when you're eating whole foods, foods with one ingredient, kale, you know, onions, you know, mushrooms, you know, uh, fruit, all of those things, you can eat infinitely, but you won't be able to because those foods trigger you to feel full because they have fiber and they have nourishment in them. And that's all the body wants. The body wants to be nourished with vitamins, minerals, trace elements, amino acids, healthy sugars, healthy fats, etc. Okay, and then it needs fiber to be able to clean out the gut and nourish the good bacteria in the gut. And that fiber actually hits receptors inside of the stomach that say, hey, this person has eaten enough. We can stop eating. So you feel fuller quicker. Okay, so this is why that conversation is so important. So we're gonna jump into first, while we overeat, I'm going to go over some of those things, and then I'm going to give you some tips and tools on how you can stop overeating so you can get that healthy body that you deserve, okay? All right, so number one, why we overeat. The number one reason, and this isn't necessarily in the order of uh, priority, but one of the number one reasons why we overeat is because we eat unconsciously, okay? You got to remember what I told you. We live in... If you live in a developed nation, especially America, you know, American food is banned in Europe. It's banned in most parts of Japan. Literally, if you take a food product that is from America and you look at that same food product in another country, the ingredients are different because a lot of the ingredients that are allowed here are outlawed in other countries. Okay, so we gotta become conscious eaters. We have to, when we go to the grocery store, we got to look at the food label. We can't just look at the front and, and just trust what they say on the front is correct. There's been so many times I looked at a product and on the front of it, it looked amazing. It looked healthy. 
It looked like it was one thing. And then I turned it on the back, looked at the actual ingredients on the label. And it was nothing like that. A lot of times it was leaning me towards believing that it was plant-based, that it had no animal products in it. Turn it on the back. It's got animal products in it. It's got chemistry in it. So it's so important for us to become conscious in the process when we go grocery shopping. It's important that we become conscious when we go to restaurants. We should be asking, asking them, what type of oil are you cooking with? Okay, are your is your produce purchased local? Is it purchased organically? Are there things on the menu that you know aren't organic versus there are organic? These are questions that we should ask when we go to a restaurant, even before we order. We should be making a conscious decision to make a healthy choice. I mean, let me just start with that. When you go into a rest, before you go to a restaurant, first choose a restaurant that has healthy choices. All right. Secondarily, when you go there, make a healthy choice. Okay. That's what it means to become a conscious eater. Okay. And when we don't eat consciously, we eat unconsciously, we end up eating foods that goes into number two, that is fast and processed. And fast and processed foods will make you overeat because addiction is baked into the food, as I mentioned before. 70% of the standard American diet is processed. Processed means all of the nourishment has been taken out of it. Okay, a good example would be something like rice or bread. Okay, when you look at bread in its original state, it's almost like a caramel brown. Okay, now when you get it and it's white, it's because it's been bleached white. It's because all of the nourishment has been pulled out of it. Okay, when you get rice, you know, the, the best form of rice is wild rice. Okay, you look at wild rice, it's like a black, it's almost like a brown black. Okay, you look at the rice you get, the rice you get is paisley white. Okay. All right, so that's because everything has been stripped out of it. So it went, went from being this rich food, wild rice, to now it's white rice because everything has been stripped out of it. And then you'll see on the packaging, it'll say enriched with. It's been enriched because it's now poor. It has nothing in it, no nutritional value in it. Okay, so we got to stay away from the fast and processed foods because they will make you overeat. OK, they're designed to make you overeat. They pay scientists to make sure you cannot eat just one. OK, they pay people to make sure when you go to a restaurant, you get a number one, you get, upsize it. OK. All right. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the biology of why the upsizing and why all of these things, things are happening in a restaurant. They're all based upon understanding your biology, your psychology and knowing how to manipulate it, okay? Really important. Number three, food addiction. Some of, some of us have a lot of food addiction and we don't know about it, but I, I guarantee you, if you started to become a conscious eater and started to look at the things that you're choosing, you will start to see that there's some foods that you're addicted to, okay? A lot of times we don't look at the foods, we'll look at and we'll say, well, I love nuts. OK, but every time you get the nuts, it has to have salt on it. And then you like chips. You're eating the chips for the salt. OK, so you may have a salt addiction you're not even aware of because you're not necessarily getting salt. But everything you're choosing has salt in it and vice versa for sugar as well, too. So a lot of food addiction causes a lot of overeating. OK, because when you're addicted to something, A, it means that the taste buds have been hijacked. OK, but B, it also means that you're not meeting a need. If you have to constantly eat and eat and eat, OK, it means that you're not able to meet the need. OK, and what I've learned in my plant based journey is this. The more plants I eat, the less I can eat. OK, <laughs> so I mean, it just shows us the healthier you eat, the less you can eat because there's so much fiber fiber and um, nourishment in it. Okay, cool. So next one, which leads from the food addiction, which is a perfect segue into parasites and yeast. You may have a lot of parasites and yeast in the body, okay? Parasites and yeast hijack your taste buds, okay? When they hijack your taste buds, they, they make you like things that they want for them. 
A parasite means that it's only out for itself, okay? This is why parasites can actually cause a lot of deficiencies. So if you have parasites, you actually can have an iron deficiency, okay? That's something that people most often do, don't talk about. And parasites can be present, uh, a lot of times I can see them in people's face. Like sometimes you can have dark circles around the eyes and it'll be puffy there. That could be a roundworm, okay? Sometimes people get uh, hookworms and they don't want know about it either. But we know our pets, our dogs and our cats have to be dewormed okay because that dewormer prevents them from dying an early death okay and historically parasites have been a problem for humans okay they're probably not quote unquote a uh, issue today because most people think parasites are only for third world countries no parasites are an issue here in developing nations too okay and they cause a lot of issues okay they cause your high, your taste buds to be hijacked and here's the thing about parasites and yeast okay Yeast, you can detect yeast on your tongue. So if your tongue has a white coat to it, especially in the morning, you take a like a tongue scraper and you scrape your tongue and you notice a lot of like whiteness is coming off of it, that could be a yeast overgrowth, okay? Yeast loves sugar, parasites love sugar. So your sweet tooth could not be, it, it may not be you. <laughs> and maybe these things controlling you on the inside that's causing you to want all this sugar, okay? Because the average American consumes about 152 pounds of sugar every year, okay? So keep that in mind. So parasites and yeast could be a really big issue with a lot of people why they're overeating so much, okay? Emotional eating. How many of you out there, just be honest for a second, have emotionally ate before? Okay, we know people who say it all the time. I'm, on, I'm over here emotionally eating. Maybe you broke up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Maybe you're going through some grief, whatever it may be. But a lot of people emotionally eat when they get depressed, when they have anxiety, uh, loneliness. And a lot of this is associated. Like you look at loneliness, when you feel lonely, you feel empty. So you want to be full. Okay, so you overeat. Okay, boredom. A lot of people get bored and they don't know what to do. So they just eat. Okay, how many people have done that? You're like, why are you still eating those? You must really like them. Nah, you still hungry? Nah, why are you eating them? I'm bored. <laughs> so you got to pay attention. Again, become conscious, okay? Bitterness. When we get bitter to sweeten up our life, we eat sweets, okay? So that's what emotional eating is. So we got to become conscious of that as well too. Deficiencies. Deficiencies will cause you to overeat because you're trying to compensate for the deficiency in vitamin D, for the deficiency in iron, for the deficiency in magnesium, but you're only eating foods that are unhealthy, that are processed and that are fast, that don't have this nourishment in it. So the body is in this constant state of eat, 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 because the body is not thinking about you eating McDonald's. The body isn't thinking that you're eating that lobster tail the body is just thinking whatever you're eating is not enough to get the nourishment so you overeat to compensate to correct the deficiency okay also hormonal imbalances hormonal imbalances will cause you to overeat too we got two hormones that are specifically tied with the satiety and the uh hunger cycle okay so feeling full and then time to eat you know you got leptin that says hey you know um You've eaten enough, chill out, okay? You got ghrelin that says, now nah, you're hungry, let's eat, okay? But when these things become imbalanced, now you don't have those proper cues coming in and thus you overeat, okay? And while, let me give you one reason going into the next one why that could happen. Because of excess body fat. When you have excess body fat, it will overproduce ghrelin and ghrelin will constantly say you're hungry. And also what's really important Excess body fat will also cause deficiencies. Excess body fat will actually cause a deficiency in vitamin D. The fat will actually absorb all of your vitamin D up, okay? So it can cause even more deficiencies, which leads to more eating as well, too. All right, poor sleep quality. When you sleep improperly, you don't get enough restful sleep. Guess what? It's going to tell the body to increase the amount of calories needed the next day. So you may eat an additional 300 calories just because you didn't sleep well the night before. Also, it creates deficiencies as well. 
okay? Because the body is burning itself for longer throughout the day. And it also can cause the hormone imbalances that I talked about as well, because when you don't sleep well, it is a stress to the body, okay? Also, as I'm leading into the next one, which is stress. Stress can increase cortisol in the body. Cortisol is a hormone. And when you're increasing this hormone all the time, it throws every hormone off. Hormones are not separate. They're like this beautiful symphony of things that are working together. And when you throw one off, it throws everything off. That's the best way to look at hormonal balance. Okay, so when you stress, you increase cortisol and other stress hormones. And guess what? That throws every other hormone off. Okay, increases insulin in the body. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. Increase fat in the body. Guess what? Fat increases ghrelin in the body. Okay, fat will also increase you know, uh, vitamin D deficiency. Okay, so it's really important. It's all connected. Last thing, this is really important in terms of what's causing so many people to overeat is that high sugar intake. Our brains are actually set up to learn to love sugar and fat. As a matter of fact, when we get sugar and we get fat, it tells the brain, yay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you did something there. Do that again. Okay, so it's important for us to know and understand food companies recognize that too. Now, the sugar we're supposed to be getting is the sugar from natural foods like fruits, okay, and healthy fats like nuts and seeds, okay? But, you know, the brain doesn't know the difference between the two, so, and science knows that, so they use that psychology against us and makes sure that everything in a box, bag, can, jar that's processed and fast has a lot of sugar in it has a lot of fat. This is why ketchup has sugar in it, okay? This is why spaghetti sauce has sugar in it. This is why everything has sugar in it, okay? Hugely important. And what's also important is some of your favorite foods that you call cheat foods that you eat all the time, like pizza, like um, ice cream. When you start to think about a lot of foods, they're just a combination of sugar and fat. Pizza, cheese, which is fat, white flour, which turns into sugar, which is a carbohydrate, you got the, the pasta sauce on there, which has sugar in it, okay? Sugar and fat, okay? So let's get into some solutions, some real life solutions that can help you with this because it not only can help you in terms of stop eating so much, help you have, maintain a healthy weight, but also be a healthier person. Number one, drink water. Why? Drink water because most of the time you think you're actually hungry, you're probably thirsty. Most of the people that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, when I ask them how much water they drink every day and I get it to get them to keep it real with me, what I discover is most people are chronically dehydrated. And in my opinion, whenever you're chronically dehydrated on a daily basis, it's going to lead to some form of dis-ease in the body because our bodies are roughly 70% water. The earth is 75% water. That means something, okay? So when we get dehydrated, guess what? It's a medical emergency in my opinion, okay? It's gonna lead to issues, issues with the kidneys. The blood is gonna get thicker. If the blood gets thicker, it's gonna make the heart work heavier, okay? The brain is mostly water. It absolutely needs water, okay? So, so much is affected. We, we literally get less intelligent the more dehydrated we get, okay? So it's hugely important. Drink more water, drink adequate water. You should be drinking at least half your body weight in ounces of water every day. Natural spring water bottled at the source, okay? Unless you have restrictions by your physician, okay? Number two, eliminate processed foods, okay? These foods trigger you to overeat. And I love this one because as you were, I was stating before, processed and fast foods were part of the problem. Well, here you go. The same problem creates the solution by eliminating it. Okay, so get rid of the processed food, thereby you get rid of the food addiction, okay? Because they bake addiction into the processed foods. Number three, don't eat three to four hours before bed. Wait at, well, wait at least, if you're going to eat and you know you go to bed at 11, finish by seven, okay? Because it takes your body at least three or four hours to digest that food. And here's the thing about digestion. Digestion works north to south. You put it in your mouth, it goes down your esophagus, into your stomach, then to, into your small intestine, then into your large intestines, and then it's evacuated out, okay? That is a gravity process, north to south. 
if you eat, which a lot of people do, they eat and lay down. You have literally taken gravity, against, you're making gravity go against itself, okay? Because now you're horizontal, you're going east to west. The body can't push the food down, okay? It's gonna create digestive issues, which eventually is gonna lead to you having issues with your gut bacteria, it's gonna lead to food not properly processing, which means that it won't properly absorb, which means you'll end up having deficiencies, which means you'll overeat, okay? Number four, eat to only 80%. When I lived in Okinawa, Japan for the four years, one of the philosophies that they had out there was harahachibu, which means eat to 80% because our brains literally have a 20% lag time, okay? What that means is when you get to about 80% full, you're really full. Your brain is just a little bit behind and telling you that it's full, okay? So eat to 80%. Eliminate alcohol, number five, okay? Reason why is because alcohol causes you to release your inhibitions, like you release whatever goes, okay? And restaurants know this. This is why they offer you alcohol before you eat. They want you to drink as much alcohol as, as possible, okay? Even restaurants that don't serve alcohol, they serve you a lot of sugary beverages. When you consume a lot of sugary beverages, it will cause you to overeat. This is why they give you free refills. This is why they ask you to upsize it as well, too. So eliminating alcohol is very important. All right. Number six, keep a food diary. Remember what I was talking about earlier, how to become a conscious eater? Well, keeping a food diary will definitely help you with that. OK, because now you can look back on Monday and say, Man, I eat pretty bad on Monday. I eat this and that, pizza and some ice cream, and I didn't have a bowel movement that day. My energy was low. I didn't sleep well. And you can see on Thursday, I ate really well that day. I had a salad, I had a nice wrap, I ate some fruit. I had a lot of energy throughout the day. You go back and look at that, that diary, it will literally tell you how you should be eating. Okay, so keep a food diary. I think that'll be very helpful as well too. Get quality sleep by changing your sleep hygiene, okay? By sleep hygiene, I mean not looking at blue light that comes from computers, cell phones, uh, televisions, at least two, hour, two to three hours before you go to bed. Because when that blue light hits the back of your retina, it keeps your brain alert, okay? So you wanna improve your sleep quality. Uh, make sure the room is at a good temperature, a sort of a cool temperature. Uh, it's just so important to improve your sleep hygiene because if you improve your sleep hygiene, making sure you go to bed at a proper time, making sure the room is quiet and dark, you improve that. It literally can improve your sleep. And if you improve your sleep, as I said before, when you don't sleep well, it will throw your hormones off. When you throw your hormones off, you can throw that full versus, you know, it's time to eat hormonal imbalance off. Okay. Manage stress, okay? Manage stress because when you stress, you're going to eat emotionally. When you eat emotionally, I've never met somebody who was stressed and got emotional or who actually ate healthy, okay? Most people, when they get stressed, when they get sad, they get depressed, they do not eat healthy. They eat the worst during that time, okay? So we wanna make sure we're properly managing stress because we know that in the world that we live in today, like it's impossible for us to be stress-free, but what we can do is properly manage stress, okay? Number nine, eat nutrient-dense food, okay? So I said that one of the problems was eating a bunch of processed food. Well, when you eat whole foods, foods that have one ingredient, kale, arugula, mushrooms, quinoa, when you eat one ingredient foods, whole foods, is gonna have fiber in them because only plants have fiber. Okay, and they're going to be nutritionally dense, a lot of vitamins, minerals, trace elements, amino acids, etc. Those are the two things that signal to our body that we should stop eating. There are receptors in our stomach that are triggered by fiber. So when you eat a fiberless diet, which most people are because 70% of the standard American diet is actually processed, meaning there's no fiber in it, you're not going to get that trigger, which means that you're going to overeat. Okay, and the last one. I talked about parasites and yeast. The freaks come out at night. That's when parasites and yeast wake up. That's when you get the sugar cravings. That's when you get the cravings for salty, creamy, 
wings, things of that nature, okay? That's because the freaks have come out at night, okay? And one of the things that you can do to remedy that is try out my detox. I have a full body detox for everybody out there who's tried it. You can kind of tap in in the comments. Part of that detox is a parasite candida cleanse that targets parasites and yeast in the body because it's that much of a problem. Not only with overeating, but a lot of other health ailments as well too. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, comment below. Tell me about the part that was an aha moment for you in the comments below. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.